Frank Roberts is a political organizer on the front lines of the Black Lives Matter movement, recently referred to by Dr. Colonel West as one of the young powerhouse intellectuals of his generation. Frank has been an active organizer on the ground both in Ferguson and throughout New York City. He is currently on the faculty at the New York University where he teaches the nation's first Black Lives Matter course. He is the co-founder co with CNN contributor Keith Boykin of the National Black Justice Coalition based in Washington, D.C. Frank is also the creator of the BlackLivesMatterSyllabus.com, a national online resource that educates the public on the history of the Black Lives Matter movement and provides tools for teaching BLM in classroom settings. A New York native, he attended NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and Yale University, and now calls Harlem home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Frank Roberts. Black Lives Matter, um, but as an educator who teaches Black Lives Matter in the classroom to provide us with some tool kits for thinking about what Black Lives Matter is as a movement and what its history is. But before I do anything, the first thing I have to do is I see some very special people in the room. I want to shout out the New York City chapter of Black Lives Matter, which is <laughs> provide a response. I've looked at the questions and here is my response. I think it's possible for us to think about the Black Lives Matter movement in at least four ways, right? The first thing is, the first way to think about Black Lives Matter is, Black Lives Matter is a human rights movement, right? And I say that because human rights movements are different than civil rights movements. Civil rights movements in the U.S. historically have been organized around the acquisition of a particular kind of legislative goal, right? The right to marry, or the right to vote, or the right to desegregate schools, or the right to live where, wherever, you want to, wherever you want to. But human rights movements are different because human rights movements cut to a deeper existential question, which is the question of who gets to be counted as human, right? And so, asking the nation, what does it mean to live in a nation where the very idea that black people are human beings is a relatively new concept in the history of the West? That's a fact. That's not hyperbole. And so Black Lives Matter is a movement seeking to rehumanize a dehumanized people. Black Lives Matter is a human rights movement. And see, if all lives matter, then it shouldn't be any controversy focusing on black lives. <laughs> The problem with all lives matter, the problem with all lives matter is that all lives have not mattered in the same way to the state. Some lives have only mattered for the purposes of capital, right? So Black Lives Matter is saying all lives can't matter until black lives do. Black Lives Matter is a human rights movement. Number two, Black Lives Matter is an intersectional movement. Black Lives Matter, that's right. BLM was founded in 2013, July 2013, by three brave black women, and I speak their names with reverence and honor. Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi. And why is their story important? Why is it, well, first of 
all, the fact that two of the three founders of Black Lives Matter are queer women is an important part of the story. Right? The, fact that, the fact that the other founder is a Nigerian American sister who does right and who does good for black women's rights is an important part of the story, right? Because it's a moment for thinking about coalition work. Because when we narrate the history of Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter not only belongs to black history, it also belongs to LGBTQ history. That's right. And we need to be able to connect those dots and see those intersections, right? 1969, the Stonewall Riots, the so-called birthplace of the modern civil rights, the modern gay rights movement, right, was what? A movement against, what was that about? Police violence. Sound familiar? That's what Stonewall was about, a movement against police misconduct. And so I say that to say the struggles of Stonewall in 1969 are not altogether different than the struggles of Ferguson, right? We don't want to conflate those things by any means, but we want to draw the connections and the intersections. Black Lives Matter is an intersectional movement. When those women, when we say Black Lives Matter, we are always already talking about women's lives and queer lives and immigrant lives and all those lives that are not simply cisgendered, heterosexual black men. Number three, Black Lives Matter is an abolitionist movement. Let's be clear. And abolitionist movements are different from other types of movements. Uh -oh. Abolitionist movements are different from reform movements. Let's be clear, Black Lives Matter is not attempting to simply reform the prison industrial complex. Black Lives Matter wants to abolish the prison industrial complex. But it's, but it's important to understand that abolitionism has never been simply about the dismantling or the breaking down of a broken world, but rather having a commitment to building a new one. When you think about abolitionism in the 19th century, abolitionism was, abolitionists did not see freedom as simply the absence of slavery, but also the presence of a more equitable world, right? So Black Lives Matter is an abolitionist movement calling us to imagine new ways of being in this world. Black Lives Matter is an abolitionist movement. Fourthly, finally, Black Lives Matter is an artistic movement. And I know that for some people that might seem strange, but I want to be clear. Artists have already been an important part of this story and of this movement. So the question is not how can we get artists involved in this movement? The question is how can we acknowledge the centrality of artists and artistic sensibilities to this movement right now and already? I mentioned Patrice Cullors, one of the founders of BLM, herself an artist. Janissa Gabriel, my sister here with New York City Black Lives Matter, a, an actual artist. There were many artists already in the, in the movement. The two women who organized the Millions March New York City last year, Amara Elliott and Sinead Nichols, full-time choreographers, right? And so beyond that, it's also important. How many people have ever been to a protest rally or a protest march? That's right. So anybody who's ever organized a protest rally already knows that it takes directorial vision and composition and theatricality and choreography, right, and staging, that all the things that artists are naturally inclined to provide us with. So Black Lives Matter is already a movement rich for artistic collaboration. And what I think this moment is calling for is to reach back into that tradition of using, of using the horrors of the world to actually produce art. In the same way we forget that it was the horror of state-sanctioned state, sta state lynching that inspired what would become Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit. <laughs> it was the murder of Emmett Till that inspired what would become James Baldwin's 1964 Blues for Mr. Charlie. It was the story of Margaret Garner, the Ohio ex-slave who decided to kill her daughter rather than see her daughter go back into slavery that formed the inspiration of Toni Morrison's Beloved. And so what am I saying? This, move, this movement is for y'all. There's a blues ballad with Sandra Bland's name on it waiting to be sung. There's a dark musical about Ferguson waiting to be composed. This movement is for you. Black Lives Matter is an artistic movement. And lastly, I'm gonna say this. Black Lives Matter, when people ask me, what is Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter is a prayer. Black Lives Matter is a, re is a remembrance prayer. 
It's a remembrance prayer for the ancestors who did not make it out of the bottom of that boat. It's a, it's a remembrance prayer for Michael Brown and Rakia Boyd and Maya Hall and Renisha McBride and Sandra Bland and all the names that we don't know. It's a remembrance prayer for our grandmothers and our great, 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 great grandmothers who washed dishes and uh, cleaned uh, clothes and raised other people's children so that one day we might see the light of freedom. And let's be clear, when they talked about freedom, they weren't talking about just one family in the White House. They were talking about freedom for us all. And what I know about prayer is this. I'm mean, also saying Black, Black Lives Matter is also what you call an affirmation prayer. An affirmation prayer is when you try to speak something into existence before you can actually tell it to reality in the world. And so even though we say Black Lives Matter and we believe Black Lives Matter, when we look at the material conditions of the world, obviously the state disagrees. And if I remember anything about what they taught me in Sunday school about prayer and faith, is that prayer and faith without works is dead. And so this moment for us, for you, is about let's get to work. Thank you. and watch the show with you. But Billy Porter and Amber wasn't having it. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, my name is Lettucey. Can you turn, the, turn me up in the monitor, please, and the piano down a little bit? I got to hear myself, you know?
Change good color!